It's a little ice cream for Michael. What do you think? I want to taste it. Let me taste it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey boys, how about we go spend some of this prize money? What do you say? What do you say? Winner, winner, winner. Joseph, what do you want? What do you want to go get? Huh? I think I know. Ice cream. Ice cream. Let's do this. Ice cream. Ice cream. We we had a little uh little prize money from yesterday. Let's go get some ice cream. Yeah. We keep saying ice cream, but we're actually meaning custard. That's right, Andy's frozen custard. It's just amazing, amazing. Crush that ice cream cone, custard I should say. Good job. All right. Butter my bread, butter my bread. <laughs> All right, bada bing, bada boom. Thank you, true love, for the salad. She's keeping me on, on course. Uh, let's see, but salad after dessert, after the custard, and after the long run. Today's uh, long run was 20 miles, 7.30 pace. I was planning to go about 7.50 to 8 minute pace, but about mile 12 to mile 18, I had to outrun a, a pretty torrential rainstorm slash a little bit of lightning, so I was booking it. I dropped it down to probably like 6.30 pace. So anyway, uh, legs are definitely feeling the race yesterday, but they're not totally trashed, and I would not typically do a, a run that long the day after a race. Don't go do that. But remember, I am on a very condensed timeline when it comes to this mini training block leading up to Pikes Peak because of the injury and the phantom pain. And I had to be patient in late June. I wanted to start running in, well, really early June to mid June, but it ended up being late June, early July. So I'm condensing everything and thankfully, crazy enough, the uh the taper starts tomorrow monday when you're watching this like i'll begin to reduce the volume of training just a little bit this upcoming week um well i shouldn't say just a little bit about 15 percent of my total volume and then it'll go down by about 40 percent the following week and then even more the next week the actual week of the race so anyway that's what's going on i'm eating salad trying to uh Enjoy the goods of life, the custard and the salad. I must say, this is, this is delicious though. The custard's good, but this is good too. And yes, we're gonna open up that box that arrived here in a little bit. I think you're gonna be excited about that. The watch, and yes, keyword is gonna be watch. And the question of the day, what type of running watch do you own? That's right, and why? And I know we've dabbled in this topic two or three weeks ago because I was researching. I've made the plunge into the New rock, new watch world. And I'll be curious to hear what you're actually using out there for your running watches. And who knows, you might just run with a Timex and that's good too. You might not run with a watch and that's good too. Whatever works to help keep you happy, healthy, and running. You know, it's like, just keep moving forward. And you know, we don't need to overload ourselves with too much data, but a little bit is good to have. Um, so it's a balance. It's a balance in this world, just a little. A little back patio dinner, a chicken salad, mm -hmm. mac and cheese, a little pesto. You guys want to go to <clears throat> Jackson Hole next year and watch the uh, Rendezvous Mountain Hill Climb? Yeah. Then you guys can take a big tram to the top of the mountain. That's a huge, huge like, gondola. Yeah, it takes you up the mountain. Probably about as big as our carport. Seth, I see a couple more noodles in your bowl. 
Your your fault? You sure? Remember you. There you go. Here we go. We got this little box, not a shoe box. We'll open this up in one minute. First, I just want to run you through the Rendezvous Mountain Hill Climb and some stats from the race that I ran yesterday. In case you uh, didn't know that, I ran a race in Wyoming, a tune-up race for the Pikes Peak Ascent, and ended up winning it. Felt good about that. Uh, so here were my splits. First mile, 9.15. Second mile, 10.03. Third mile, 10.19. Uh, fourth mile, 12.12. And then fifth mile, 1044. And then the last 0 0.6, 0 0.7, so I think it was a little under six miles, was 13, basically 25 pace, because at the top, it really turned into some pretty much scrambling. Like you were still running, but you were definitely using your hands to negotiate the boulders. And uh, so the total elevation gain was 4,100. And at least my watch says 4,126 feet of elevation gain. Uh, so with about a 1052 average mile pace. Uh, so a very solid effort, I would say, considering I haven't done any speed work yet. So I have, so it's crazy, but when you're watching, I have 19 days to sharpen, which really isn't that much time, but I think it's, I'm going to be fine with it. But I guess, okay, I take that back. I just remembered. I did that one little speed session on the top of Mount Bross last week. But other than that, I haven't really done speed work. So we're working on a limited uh, time, but, uh, time crunch here, as I already mentioned. And I will, I'll get up high at least six more times before the race. And I'll mix in probably three speed sessions in the next 19 days. And then the rest will just be rest and recovery. And as far as the rendezvous a mountain hill climb, how did it go for me mentally? Uh, you never know at the starting line who's going to be there, who's going to show up. Uh, I was in, so the gun goes off, I take off. I'm in, immediately in fifth place, and then in fourth place by about the half mile, and then in third place by maybe the three-quarter mile, and then basically took over first place at a mile and a half, maybe but bet between a mile and a half and two miles. And I just knew, like, I just, <laughs> based on how, so I can really tell watching other people how they are going to perform in the race, and that's what I, I'm very observant as I'm racing. Like, I, I watch people's cadence. I watched their form, I listened to their breathing, and I just knew like I was gonna track down first place. I knew it. So um, I was just, I, I wasn't, I actually wasn't really that patient. I just, I went, he went out fast and I just tracked him down by a mile and a half and then started to put the pedal down uh, from there on out. Like I wanted to make sure he didn't come knocking on the door again. Cause whenever you pass someone, especially <laughs> toward the top, like you don't want to go backward again. You don't want, because if somebody catches you, if you, after you pass them, oh man, there's a good chance they're going to blow by you. Cause it's either you went out, you, your, your move was too aggressive or uh, they were just chilling just enough that they were able to hold a pace and then pick up a pace. So I pressed hard and um, basically mentally I was visualizing the Pikes Peak Ascent during the Rendezvous Mountain Hill Climb, just so you know. Uh, the, uh, the terrain was actually, this race is a little steeper than the Pikes Peak Ascent. The ascent is steep in certain sections, but it's 7,500 feet of vertical gain over 13 miles versus 4,100 feet of vertical gain over six miles. So this was definitely steeper, uh, but I was, I was visualizing Pikes Peak and thinking about other runners that I know will be at Pikes Peak and uh, just visualizing pumping the arms, keeping my form, trying to float the mountain and not fight the mountain, okay? I'll talk more about that at some point, but trying to float it rather than fight it. Um, so that's, that's a little bit of my mental strategy for uphill running. And then topped out on top, winning the race, felt good. Second W for 2019, two races, two Ws, we will take it. And uh, so thanks for all the kudos on Strava and everywhere else, it's just like, I'm just grateful. I'm considering a month ago, I was dealing with phantom pain. So it's insane. Okay, let's open this bad boy up now. I thank you again for your patience. I know many of you came here uh, just for this. So let's see. Oh, man. And just so everybody knows, this knife is very dull. 
So I'm not worried about cutting myself at all. Just want you to uh, be aware of that. Oh my goodness. All right, so this is my next running watch. And you know my background when it comes to technology, like uh, uh, it's a little up in the air, but uh, all right, are you ready? Okay, one, two, three, what's it gonna be? Oh, the Sun 2 5, can you see it there? The Sun 2 5, I went with Sun 2 again. So my old running watch is a Sun 2 watch. Yes. <laughs> Seth wanted the box. The Sun 2 5, oh, so my old watch is the Sun 2 Avid P3. You see it on your screen there. Bought it off of Craigslist for, I think I paid $100, but that was three years ago. And it was still a solid watch three years ago, but I uh, decided it was time to upgrade to a, a better technology, uh, even though I am not a very tech savvy guy. And away we go. All right, we're opening this up live for you right now. I have not seen this watch ever in person. So, and I'll just mention the weight real quick. I don't have the weight memorized. That's why I'm glancing at my phone. So we're looking at 66 grams or 2.33 ounces. And I'm gonna weigh here in a second my Ambit Peak 3 because this is a little on the heavy side and it doesn't make a huge difference, but maybe a little bit in your arm swing, just a little bit. So anyway, all right, here we go. What a, whoa, there it is. Oh my goodness, okay, all black. That's right, I went with the all black and uh, oh, that's nice. Okay, I don't, I don't quite know what to do. This is the studio. this is not the, uh, the watchio, so. All right, so it's not gonna turn on quite yet because I gotta charge it, but uh, just so everyone knows, I'm not a big data guy. And I was looking for a watch that was lightweight, light, much lighter than my Ambit Peak 3, and I'm gonna weigh this again in a minute. Um, but I didn't need like the huge bells and whistles of the Sun 2 9, which I think is around, I think it's a lot of money, like $900. This guy's coming in at 330, which is not cheap, but, that's a pr compared to all the other products out there on the market, that's a pretty good deal for what you get. A lot of you ask for my opinion, uh, or sorry, you ask for my heart rate on my training runs, and I was always taught and trained and coached to run by feel over heart rate uh, because there's so many other uh, variables when running, uh, even if it's just simply like today, on today's 20 mile run, my legs were a little tired from the race yesterday. So if I would have just been focused strictly on my heart rate and not taking in all the sensory data of my entire body, uh, I may have been running too fast or too slow. So I actually don't track my heart rate and I go by feel. So, but, but supposedly this Sun 25 can track my heart rate. I must say though, I'm probably gonna turn the feature off or just ignore it because once again, I go by feel and I go by feel. I don't know what else to tell you. Like I've just been running for 21, 22 years and it's just like, I just love going by feel, whether it's an easy day, nine minute, 9.30 pace or a harder day. And I'll commit to you right now that in a month from now, I will do my first ever GPS watch uh, review for the Sun 25. I again, this is not my wheelhouse, but I'll do my best in about a month from now. So, thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. Again, watch is the keyword. Question of the day: What is your running watch? And maybe you don't even run with a watch. That's cool too. Maybe you just use your phone. I'll be curious to hear how many people just carry their phone. That's becoming more and more popular, and it'll be f even more fascinating to see how. Apple watches or Android watches continue to make inroads because I think it's happening as we continue to simplify the technology where you can just walk around, you know, go for your run and then scan your watch at the grocery store to pay for, you know, a, a, a sandwich and a drink after your run or something. So it's, it's continuing to happen. So it'll be, it'll be inter interesting to see how the technology evolves. All right. Uh, here's a couple more vlogs on the end screen. Some vlogs in the last two weeks that really jumped out at me and are getting great uh, views from all of you. So here's a couple vlogs for you to watch. And again, thank you for being here. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. We got a good week coming up. Good week. See you tomorrow.